What's that? Won't even be able to start with it. You won't even. So, do you? What do you believe? Do you believe in God? Uh, I used to. You used to. Why? Why? Why used to? You don't anymore. I was born a uh, practicing Catholic. Okay. Well, that's a good thing to leave that. Saint Thomas. Yeah. Went to Saint. Uh, went to. Uh, middle, uh, sorry. It's all right. Elementary, middle school. Went to Northwest Catholic. No oh boy. Um, yeah, that, that, that'll take it out of you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, it turns out when you try to force it onto like. Yeah. Rebellious teens, it doesn't work. Especially Catholicism, because it has so many weird things in it. it. So many rituals yeah. and dogma. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, I'll be honest. I looked at all the others. I looked at yeah. Islam. Mm -hmm. I looked at Protestantism. Mm -hmm. I looked at Orthodoxy. I looked yeah. at everything. Wow. Well, so you're searching. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm not searching as much anymore. Okay. Um, I mean, I'm not one of those who says I don't have time for it. Everybody's got time for it. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, everybody to make those Yeah, choices. yeah. And even in Catholic school, I, I was kind of distancing, and they were cool with it. They were really, really okay. fine with it. They were accepting, which is you know, something I love. But right now, I'm a Gnostic theist. I believe there's okay. something out there. Okay. I just don't personally claim to understand it. Okay. Everybody can make sense of what they believe, and everybody's mm -hmm. got that right. I just personally hey. don't. How you doing? Don't got it. Yeah, yeah. Did you need prayer? Uh, do you mind? Hold, I want to talk to you more. Oh, if you yeah, got a, a second, yeah. what would you like prayer for? My name is Norman. Hi. How are My you? My name is Seraphim Walker. I'm Seraphim. Uh, a Christian. Okay. And I've got a huge psych exam that I've been uh, trying to thoroughly prepare for. Okay. Um, and I've been kind of praying every step. I've got many people praying for me, and I okay. just would love to receive some more. All right. Let me pray. Have you done the work? Yes. Okay. Yeah. All right. Father, I thank you for Seraphim, you said? Yes. Seraphim, I thank you for her. I ask, dear Lord, that you would bring back to her mind all that she has studied. I pray that she would be able to put it back onto the test that she needs. Help her not to be nervous, just to relax in you. It'll come back to her. But I also pray that you would give her the wisdom to be able to discern what they are saying in the psychology department from what is your truth and um, what is just falsity yes. of the world. And I, I know that we have to do that in order to pass our exams, but I do pray you give her greater wisdom, help her to walk in your ways and have your, not just the knowledge of the world, but your glorious wisdom that comes from your word. I just thank you for this, and I thank you that she knows where to go for wisdom, and that's to you. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God thank bless you, Seraphim. You as well. Good luck. So you're, you're, you're an agnostic theist. Gnostic. Agnostic oh, oh, is... Okay. Um, oh, Gnostic. Oh, Gnosticism. Yeah. Okay. Agnostic would be... You don't know. I don't know and mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't believe. Okay. Gnostic is, I believe there's something out there. Okay. I just don't want to put a pin in anything. Okay. Like concrete in my mind. How would, you, how would you ever come to know whether what you believe is true or not or come to a conclusion? I don't think we can. Okay. Um, I believe every religion's got their evidence. Okay. Um, I'm a history major. Okay. I've cool. Civilizations all across the world. Yeah. Different cultures, um, and you know what I kind of sat down to settle in my mind is who's to say they're wrong, who's to say we're wrong. Mm, that's the question. I know. That is the you know you 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 obviously are bringing things down to the basis, yeah. and I'll tell you why I believe as a yeah. biblical. 100% believing in Jesus Christ, sola scriptura, the Bible alone. I mean, Catholicism gets into not just the Bible, but it gets into, you know, the magisterium and all the traditions and all that other stuff. So they add to the Bible. Every other religion does the same thing. But the Bible, the biblical Christianity is built upon the presupposition, right? The self-authenticating presupposition that the Bible is the Word of God. That I, it may sound like circular reasoning. Why do I believe that this is the Word of God? Because the Bible says it's the <laughs> Word of God. Yeah. But ultimate presuppositions must be self-authenticating. Yeah. Because if, there is an, if there's something outside of the Bible that authenticates it, that makes that the higher authority. So as a, a Reformed biblical Christian, I start with what the Bible says of itself, that it is the, the w Word of God. Now, if you take the Christian worldview, you're saying that you're agnostic, Theists, mm -hmm. you just don't know. I, from a Christian worldview, starting with only the Bible, I can tell you there's a God at the center of the universe, what He's like, what He requires of us, mm -hmm. um, what uh, you are, who you are, you know, how, where you're going to spend eternity, and all those. And I even say this further if you get rid of this book, all you have is just human opinion. Mm -hmm. 
atheists, tr chance random processes, and all the rest of the stuff, you are left with, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I am left with I do know. In fact, if you reject this book that, that has the answers, I have the answers. If you reject the God of the Bible, you cannot prove anything, which is what you're, the state that you're in. You can't prove anything. You have no epistemology in order to determine whether something is right or wrong. You're absolutely right. So, you know, that, that leaves you in a very serious state because, because all you will ever do is just in, 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 uh, in insecurity and not being sure. I am absolutely sure. Absolutely. I would die for it. Put a gun to my head right now and say, deny Jesus Christ. Pull the trigger, man, because you're only helping me out because I'm going to go to be with him. <laughs> I believe you. And I if you die... I mean, the Bible, the Bible is absolute truth. You as an agnostic, you're not going to stand before God someday and say, you know, you didn't give me enough evidence. Oh, yeah. I know. That won't fly. That it won't fly. No, it won't at all. And the, the law of God, I mean, the law of God and the Ten Commandments, you know, have you ever taken God's name in vain? Probably. Yeah. Have you ever lusted? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Have you ever stolen? Nope. I haven't done that. Okay. You ever lied? Oh, yeah. Okay. Dishonor your mom and dad in different ways growing up? Okay, so you've broken various forms yeah. of the commandment. I've, so, done, I've uh, gotten my forgiveness from priests when I was a practicing. Yeah, but, but the priest can't give you the, the forgiveness. And that's the, that's the lie of Roman Catholicism. The Bible says that there's only one mediator between us and God, and that is Jesus Christ, who is fully God and fully man. The biblical message is, here's the question, how do you get rid of, you feel guilty for different things. Every person here, they try to suppress it, they try to ignore it, they try to drink it away and you know have sex and so they don't feel anything, but all it does is exacerbate it. Mm. So what? How, how do you get rid of your sin? How do you get rid of your guilt? You gotta pray up. Ultimately speaking, what biblical Christianity says is that one God, yeah. three persons, Jesus Christ came into this world, lived the perfect life as God and man, and when he went to the cross as an innocent man, God the Father, who is just, must, must punish sin. I mean, could you imagine a court system that says, we don't care, we're just going to let all these thieves go and these yeah. murderers go? So sin must be punished. But biblical Christianity says that Jesus Christ, you got a little bit of this in Catholicism. Jesus Christ was punished on your behalf. Yeah. So that if you believe in Jesus Christ and trust in him, God will forgive you. Not because of you, but because he punished Christ on my behalf, not not yeah, on your behalf, sins, unless you believe. So you understand to a certain degree, but you're you're stuck in Gnosticism. You don't know. Yeah. You're stuck in. You can never get rid of your guilt. You can never be able to make any kind of truth claims of what's right and what's wrong. I mean, how do you know what's right behavior and what's wrong behavior? I believe that as long as the end of the day, your actions don't harm anyone, mm. and you've had a positive impact on someone's day, whatever course you're on is doing okay. Do you, I mean, see, do you see how you're, you've assumed biblical truth there? You've talked about, uh, what, what are some of the words that, like good, yeah. um, you know, not hurting anybody as if that somehow is a bad, necessarily a bad thing. You have assumed the Christian worldview because you, as an agnostic, you are, you are not a Gnostic. That's what I'm submitting to you. Mm. You're not a Gnostic because you're talking about categories of good and evil and you're claiming that you know what is good and what's evil. Well, every religion and every belief, I would say, has assumptions of good and evil. Mm -hmm. Some differ. Yep. You're back again. I am. Yeah, How you I've doing? Been, I've been seeing you so many times. Yeah, yeah. You want, you want to pray for all of us? Pray that we all do good on our midterm. Yeah, oh, it's, yeah. Out, it's on yeah. everybody's mind. Starting. Yeah. yeah. I really thought I had the mid, the mid, uh, my math and my computer midterm on the same day. Thank God. It, it don't, yep, it, they're, they're not. Well, my that's math good. Ones on, it don't, and my math one is on Friday and my computer is on Wednesday. That'll give me time to breathe. I'm the only one I'm really I'm just I'm just nervous for the math one because there's a lot of formulas now because we're because we're in geometry. Yeah. Yeah. Well let me pray for you. Lord, I pray for my sister that you would give her the wisdom and the strength and recall everything that she studied during the semester. And I pray that um, she would be able to pass her classes and to most of all know you. And to follow Jesus Christ every day I, in her life. Yeah, I, yeah, I'm, yeah, I got baptized in 2019. Wonderful, wonderful. Yep, God it. bless you. Yeah, God saved my, God saved my preteens. Yeah, yeah, yeah wonderful. It took me longer to get baptized only, only because of fear. Mm -hmm. That's the one thing that's holding me back. Yeah, yeah. And I feel like the one time I have. If I, I don't want to keep you if you need no, to go. I don't have anything on. Yeah, that's yeah. So, that's so what, that's what that's what this world is. It's all in fear. That must yeah. change. 
Yeah. And, and unless we do that, then nothing's going to change. Yep. That's right. So That's why I'm here. You, you pray for that. Yeah, I will. Can I? Yeah, help yourself to whatever you want. Those are good. Yeah, this is a good, good little pamphlet, too, yeah. for you. I mean, life Thanks. ultimate question. Yeah. So, you know, you, yeah. all other religions do have an assumption of what's right and what's wrong, but where does it come from? The danger of, because really, you, what you're talking about in Gnosticism is subjectivity. Yeah. You are the determiner of what's right and what's wrong. Yeah. Carry that out on all of society. Carry that out to a dictator like oh, yeah, Joseph Stalin. They'll and, always say, well, what I'm doing is good and what I'm doing is bad. And then they got the gun, which means might makes right. Yeah. So your philosophy can lead to Joseph Stalin and Adolf Hitler. I think it's a bit of a stretch, but... Why yeah. not? Well, my, the way I phrased it was... No, 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 no. Of my I'm not talking about you personally, Gnosticism but if, as if, a whole. if we take Gnosticism as a whole and we put it, I mean, Adolf Hitler was a Gnostic and so, yeah. does, so was Joseph Stalin, and I'm trying to bring you to the logical conclusion that, for like Friedrich Nietzsche, mm. God is dead. Adolf Hitler takes that God is dead, the Superman that Friedrich Nietzsche talked about, right? Ultimately, mm. it's the Aryans and the Jews are lesser. Oh, we yeah. got a further um, evolution, so we're going to kill the inferior. A lot of my personal good and wrong views come from, I was raised, like I said, I was raised Catholic. Mm -hmm. um, I dropped the dogma, but I took the right and the wrong out of it. Like, How do you know what's right and what's wrong? It's the Bible. Yeah. <laughs> it, it pushed me in the direction of the note. Yeah. So, what I took from Jesus, how I personally see him, is I don't know, I don't mm -hmm. want to know, mm -hmm. and I don't want to claim to know if he was truly God, if he was just a really smart man, mm -hmm. or what, and I'm not trying to diminish him. No, 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 I get it, get it. And I took what he said, and I agree with it all. I, yep. agree, I agree with almost everything in the Bible. Yep. I can't say I agree 100%, Sure. but I agree with the Bible and a lot of its core principles, values, and messages. Mm -hmm. They're really great for Western society. Mm -hmm. They're really great for raising your kids. I want to push my kids through Catholic school when I grow up and I have... How would you do that to them? Put well, I, <laughs> it's I messed you up. Specifically the, one, <laughs> specifically the one I went to though because they were great for prepping me for college okay. and instilling great virtues. Okay. And the Catholic schools I went to, they never forced Catholic views onto anyone. Mm -hmm. When I told them I didn't want to go to confession, mm -hmm. when I was like still trying to figure out what I was, they were fine. Mm -hmm. They said, you don't have to receive communion, okay. um, but we're still going to teach you. Mm -hmm. And they taught us history, and they said, this is Catholic history, this mm -hmm. is Protestant history. Mm -hmm. They tried not to muddle it as much as they could. Mm -hmm. um, of course, obviously, there's some bias. Of course, I, yeah, yeah. The teachers were all Catholic. Everybody was, I know there's And I, I respect somebody. I mean, I'm absolutely biased. Yeah. The Bible is only the Bible. Reformation, Martin Luther, John Calvin. Yeah. Because they, not because I worship them, but they said the Bible only. What do you do with C.S. Lewis's argument that says when you really look at and examine the, the words of Jesus Christ, he claimed to be God? Yeah. If I were sitting there saying, hey, brother, I'm God. Like, right? I could do, I could walk on water. I could do all that other stuff. You'd say, that guy's a little bit crazy, yeah, yeah. right? Like, so lie. Jesus is either, either he's crazy or he's a liar. He's, he's lying to everybody. How you doing? Hi. How are you? Do you want me to pray for you? Do you mind just waiting a second? He's a liar, lunatic, or what he says is really true. Yeah. So that, that to, to, I remember being in the classes where Jesus was a good man. Jesus was not, according to the world standards, a good man because he claimed to be God. So you have to either dismiss him as an immoral man who's a liar or dismiss him as a lunatic or fall at his feet and worship him as the one that died in your place and sins. I have, a, I have a way we can go for that, but... Yeah, yeah. How are you prefer. doing? Hi. How are you? My name's Norman. Crystal. Crystal, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. What can I do for you? Pray for me. Okay, what would you like prayer for? Um, it's just something I don't want to do, but it just... Seems okay. In general. God knows. Yes. Okay. Yes. All right, Crystal. Father, um, you know the secrets of our hearts. You know every thought that has left a shadow on our minds and you do not forget anything. And you know us in absolute detail and you know what's going on in her life in absolute detail. And I ask, Father, you would give her, first of all, wisdom according to the Bible, not according to her own strength, not according to the world, that she would know and look at what the scripture says about what's right and what's wrong. Second of all, I also pray you would convict her of any sin that's in her life. If she's in, engaged in something that is not of you, I ask, Lord, that you would convict her heart. And third, I pray that she would come to forgiveness in Jesus Christ and that she would find relief for the guilt of her soul, the shame of her soul. 
the struggles that are going on in her life. Maybe it's financial. I don't know, Lord, you do. But I thank you, Lord, that she knows to look to you and to ask me to pray, but she's ultimately looking to you. And I pray that um, she would find the answers that she's looking for. I just thank you for her and the privilege to be able to pray for her. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you, Crystal. Thank you. You're very welcome. You're, You're very welcome. welcome. Go ahead. What were you going to say? Oh, I lost it. <laughs> oh, no. Jesus, liar, lunatic, or... Yes. Um, this, I, I don't mean to insult you. No, don't you I, insult me all the way. It, we're talking, see, philosophy major, that's what I was here. We attack arguments, not people. Yeah. Right? Okay. So you're not insulting me. Well, if I'm going to insult you, my name is Sam. My name is Norman. <laughs> nice to yeah. meet you. Yeah. Um, as a historian, I read a lot of documents mm -hmm. and a lot of primary sources. Mm -hmm. um, and I, every time I write, I had to grapple with this for a while. My professors keep telling me, you got to take your emotion and your views out of what you're writing. Okay. Because it's impossible, but yeah. They, 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 they said that. They said, yep. it's, you're always going to have some bias when you write. Yep. Like I wrote last semester, I wrote a 15 page paper on the Black Panthers. Mm. I don't even like them. Mm -hmm. I, historically, I think they're, they mess up a lot, but I had to take that out. Yep. I had to take that out. Okay. I tried. Yep. Um, and I kind of come to terms that I don't think every document, every document has some source of bias and some validity to mm -hmm. it. The Bible has validity. Mm -hmm. It is a document that's been passed Valid out. Valid is, centuries. what's the standard of validity that you're My using? My validity is, it's, it's kind of hard. I try to put a percentage on it, but it's impossible to do. Okay. Um, my problem is the Bible has been reprinted. Okay. Um, it has been translated. It's an ancient text from the Middle East. Or, I mean, it's been passed around. The names in there have been westernized, like Peter. Mm -hmm. um, like, yeah, we have translations, yeah. so sure, sure. Yeah. Um, my concern with the Bible, and I never write this off to just throw the Bible at the window. Mm -hmm. I hate mm -hmm. people who say that. No, you're a thinker. That's cool. It's, I'm following you. What could have been written for someone else's agenda? Mm -hmm. And that's always something that's been concerning me, but I hate the people who say that and they just go throw the whole thing out. Like, Yeah, yeah, I get it. Like, I get it. Have you ever read the Bible? Yeah. From I, cover to cover? I mean, yeah. not, not that you have to read it, but you, you've read enough of I've it. I've read enough of okay, it. Okay, good. I don't... Because I can't stand when people like, the Bible's a piece of crap. It's like, you ever read it? No. It's like, well, go, go somewhere I've else. read that thing back and forth. I don't yeah. remember all yeah, of yeah. it. Fair. I, if you like try to ask me to quote something, I, mm -hmm. it's been years. Mm -hmm. But I've read it, but I've never read it as a historical document. Mm. I need to sit down and do that one. Yeah. Day. Like, I need to get... I, I, I believe get, it is a historical document. Yeah. I do. Like, when it says in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Yeah. God was there. So he's writing about what it is that yeah, he did it, and he I mean, saw. it is a history. Yep. It's, it's an anthology. Yep. It's a, yeah, there's poetry in it. Yeah. It's one of the most beautiful texts ever written. Reprinted, rewritten. It's one of the biggest texts Isn't ever written. Isn't that the truth? Yeah. Most yeah. people don't realize. Like, the Bible, I preached this the other day. The Bible has had more influence on, on the world than any yeah, other book. Like Western yeah. society can yep. trace a lot of its laws. Yep. And how we guide ourselves. That's right. To the Bible. Yep. Um... Just a few years ago, China said they wanted to rewrite the Quran to uh, morally accurate mm -hmm. socialist values. I mean, I don't care too much personally about socialism, but that is an affront yeah. to all. The, liberation religions. theology does the same thing to the Bible. They, they, they can interpret it through Marxist the, philosophy. My thing is, there's some issues in the Bible mm -hmm. that I think they need to stay there. Okay. Whatever the problems are, mm -hmm. I think they need to stay there for us to be able to challenge mm -hmm. and for us to stand by. But see, I, I follow your argument. Yeah. The difference is. You, st or mankind, we'll just say that, yeah. or you, you know. Yeah. Again, I'm not going to try to insult you. You stand in judgment of this book. Yeah. So you're the one that's like standing on the throne, and this is the book on the dock, which means the, on trial. Yeah. And I would say the opposite. This book is the judge. I mean, all, the, the expression of the judge, and it's judging you. Mm -hmm. So, and I would say as far as the historical historicity, there is no historical document, and I challenge you to, to, to look this up that has more historical evidence of the validity of what this scripture says. Qumran, the Dead Sea Scrolls prove this. There are thousands of New Testament manuscripts so that we can lay it out and we can see it says this, says this, says this, says this. Oh, it's, there's a variation here. That's wrong. Yeah. So that we can actually recreate what the original manuscripts were. Yeah, and that's why I believe that the Bible 
I don't care about being translated to different languages. Mm-hmm. I just care as long as it's being reprinted, it's accurate to mm-hmm. the original. Yeah, um, I, think, I agree. Like I said, if we're going to stand by it, mm-hmm. you have to be prepared to stand by its worst and its best. Yep, as uh, as, I, as I am. Yeah, and the yep. fucking admirable man. So. Yep. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's fine, that's fine. Um, yeah, absolutely. I, I, I would say to you that you take this book out of here even though there are other religious books, they self-contradict. Yeah. This book is the only self-authenticating book that there is. This book needs no other higher authority to determine. That's why I'm not an evidentialist. Mm. In Christian apologetics, defending the faith, you'll find most people, well, the Bible, we can, I, I did a little apologetics. Well, the manuscripts and so forth, and look at the building, there's a building there, so there must be a God. Mine is presuppositionalism. It's the, the Bible provides the preconditions for intelligibility. When you get rid of this book, you cannot prove anything. The ultimate proof of biblical Christianity for me is that, is the, is the impossibility of the contrary. Get rid of the Bible, you can't prove anything. Even proof itself is destroyed. Yeah, I mean, I believe, the, like I said, the Bible is almost... Do you follow the argument? I do. Okay. I do. The Bible supports itself. Mm-hmm. Um, it's hard for me to say that because from an academic and scholastic standpoint, it's uh, uh, something can't support itself. In well, argument, you, but this is... I, oh, but you, do, do you understand that this whole, this whole university is built upon that? When I was in philosophy, I'll give you an example. We were studying analytical philosophy. Professor says, uh, A.J. Eyre, analytical philosophy is built upon this belief that truth is only that which you can empirically verify. Mm-hmm. Let that set for a second. So I raise my hand and say, can you empirically verify the truth of that statement? You can't. It's self-defeating. Another class in sociology, there are no absolutes. Is that an absolute statement? Do you see how? And how do you know that reason is reasonable? By reason. reason. How do you know that science is true? By science. Science can't determine truth. Science determines science. That's all it can. So they are all self-defeating. But this is a self-authenticating book. So that every, the humanism that's here in, in at Central, I mean, it's absolutely self-defeating. So you're saying that we use academics? Well, what verifies academia? Well, well I meant more from my field. Mm. My field we, is not self-supporting, it's self-criticizing. Yeah. Um, so that's my field. I understand the other, like a lot of fields are self-supporting. But you also have a Christian assumption. Yes. That the past exists. Absolutely. How do you know? I was Christian. And yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, you don't know. You, as a Gnostic, you would have to say all that exists is the moment in the past. Is we don't even know whether, like David Hume, who is a, a British philosopher, atheist, said there's no, there's no. As an atheist, there's no way to determine the uniformity of nature. What that means is a billiard ball, ball gets hit on a pool table and it just scatter all the rest of the balls. That there's no way to know that there's an actual connection between all those things. We assume it as an atheist because atheism is built upon chance random processes yeah but biblical christianity says there's cause and effect because of god i, I could i tried to when i was still struggling i thought i was an atheist hmm. but then what i realized is i don't believe in absolute ideology like that is that an absolute statement i just That's caught the problem. you in it. i know there's the problem there yeah so this is why i'm talking with you because i'm still trying to develop my own views yeah which is like again, it's a self-destructing opinion. That I have. Mm-hmm. Um, that's why I lean more towards Gnostic theism, I guess, sort of, because I don't want to close the door on anything. Mm-hmm. Um, I have a friend who believes in the Roman gods, mm-hmm. and I asked her, I was like, "Are you serious?" Because I thought that was a little absurd. And she went, "Yeah." And I went, "Okay." Yeah. I mean, yeah, power to you. Mm-hmm. One of the oldest religions in the world, Zoroastrianism, mm-hmm. is still active. Mm-hmm. And what I told myself, and what I've come to. Except is, I'm never going to write someone else's religion off. Mm-hmm. I can never do that. Mm-hmm. I can't. Um, out of respect for them and out of respect for all religions. Mm-hmm. If I write one off, I feel like I'm disrespecting a lot of them. Yeah, and I'm in the opposite position because yeah. I holding to the book, the Bible says the first commandment, thou shalt have no other gods before me, which yeah. excludes everything and everybody. And Jesus Christ said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and nobody comes to the Father but by me. So I... Actually, all those other religions are intolerant because as a biblical Christian, everybody who says, we tolerate all, as you are kind of saying, I tolerate all religions. What about the exclusivity of the intolerance of biblical Christianity? How do you fill that, fit that into your yeah. tolerance? And that's another reason why 
I could not be a Christian today is because I just disagree with that first commandment. Mm. And I can't be a practicing Christian if I disagree with even one of them. Mm-hmm. I can't nitpick. Mm-hmm. I can't pick and choose what I want to believe in from Christianity. Mm-hmm. Then I'm going to form my own sect, and I just mm-hmm. don't. That's not it. But I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be a little tough on you. I think that you are obeying that, and but ultimately you're your own God, and you're, you're the only determiner of what's right and what's wrong. You're the one that's sitting in the judgment seat of going through life, kind of like you know, trying to determine and figure out everything else. But you are on the throne of your own religion. Oh yeah, I mean, as of right now, I'm the center of my own ideology. Mm because I haven't given myself to my ideology. Yeah. So. But the biblical Christian, and this is, this is why I'm out here, because you go to most churches, Catholic churches, Protestant churches, they've turned into businesses. They're, oh. all, they're, they're all about, you know, very subtly, and I did it, so I know. You know, you start catering to the people, and you make a program and pass the plate, and so we uh, preach, because I'm afraid if I say that, Joe's not going to give his $500 a yeah, week and all that other stuff. The basket. Yeah. Now, but now... No way, man. I, I care enough about people like to come here and say, and I'll say this to you. You don't repent of your sins. You die, you're going to go to hell. Mm. You have, and, and, and you will even be worse because you have enough understanding. I could see it in your eyes and just from what you're saying. You're, you're smarter than 99.99. I'm not trying to compliment you based on that, but you get it. Which makes you even more accountable. I know, it's, more, it's a conscious sin. Yeah. It is a conscious sin. I'm aware of my conscious sin. Which action. is just sin. It's a, it's a sin. And I'm making my choice. So it's not just... And, and I would hope that you will make your choice of an eternal decision that will benefit you for all time and all eternity. Not just then, but also now. So that you can be clear. Not a, not a dogmatic ass, but a person that is confident, knows what he believes, therefore has the guidance of what's right and what's wrong in his life. And, and you could actually offer somebody, as I'm trying to do with you, mm-hmm. you know, I'm just a beggar trying to show another beggar where you could find bread. And Jesus said he's the bread of life. Yeah. Hey, how you doing? I gotta go into class, but you're doing something really good. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Of course, no problem. God bless you. If I if I were to choose a religion tomorrow, if someone put a gun to my head and said choose a religion, I would offer my soul up to Jesus mm. because it's how I was raised and it's the it's the religion and ideology my morals most mm. aligned with. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'm not I wouldn't do it just because they have a gun to my head. No, I you understand. Get, you get what I, I do. I get what you're saying. I would offer so maybe in the future. I'll come back to... You know what? You're assuming you have a future. Once you die, the Bible says in Hebrews, first comes death and the judgment. And am I using the scare tax a little bit? Yeah. I'm being right, right up front. No, you don't I know. Am. I mean, you could walk here, somebody blow your brain out, or you could just... Yeah. You're, you're done for all eternity. So the Bible... This, the way the Christianity is often presented in most of the churches, please come to Jesus. Yeah. The Bible says, no, brother. You, God commands you to come to Jesus Christ and you will be held accountable before the one and only true holy God based upon who you are and what you have decided about that and so I would encourage you like start stop screwing around and get right with God if I were to convert it wouldn't be out of fear of going Mm -hmm. to hell yeah 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 I'm with you it would be out of love yes for the religion so I understand the fear tactic I understand it Um, but I I don't think I'd be fully mentally, emotionally, and physically aligned mm. if I were doing it just because I don't want to go to hell. No, I agree. I agree. I, it would have to be something that I, I want and I desire for not just me, but my loved ones as well. Let, let me lay this on you. As a Reformed, Christ, Biblical Christian holding to what the Bible says, the Bible says that people are born physically alive and spiritually dead. The Bible says in um, Ephesians chapter 2, you are dead in your trespasses and your sins. So I would submit to you, biblically speaking, you do not have the ability to find God. It is God that is seeking you out. And it will be the, if you come to Christ, it's because of the work of the Holy Spirit in your life. Divine election. That's what John Calvin brought out of what the Bible says. The word election is in there. So it's, it, you, do you have a choice? Absolutely. Yeah. But is it God ultimately? Jesus says you must be born again. But this is not man's decision, he says in John 3. It is the Spirit of God that will awaken your heart. Ezekiel chapter 36 says the Spirit of God has to take away your heart of stone. You have a heart of stone. It's dead towards God. And unless the Spirit of God comes and takes away your heart of stone and gives you a heart of flesh, you can't respond to God. But faith comes by hearing and hearing the Word of God. And that's why I'm here. 
I have confidence and peace. I'm not Arminianism and Calvinism. Are you familiar with the two fra frames? Arminian is we we can choose. Biblical Calvinism says you can't choose, but faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And as I proclaim the word of God, the Spirit of God will do that upon His sheep. My sheep hear my voice, is what Jesus said. I think you may be. I really do. I'm not saying that to compliment you, but the fact that you're hearing and there's a there's a level of understanding you know it may be that the holy spirit has already done a work in your life and you actually are a christian and you just haven't come to the understanding and and god the father is just going to keep after you until you finally say i screwed up enough i've, I've had enough wow. and on that day remember these words in my, our conversation i'm a believer that god is a loving god yes a merciful god and a forgiving god absolutely through jesus though i know and i hope that one day if I do go back, if I do return to the faith, yeah. I know he'll welcome me with open arms. Yes, he will. Absolutely. I know. I know Prodigal son, father. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Go ahead. He, uh, I know if I were to go choose another faith, there would be disappointment. Mm. I know. I know God would still love me, but he'd be disappointed. Yep. Um, I'm one of God's creations. I know he would yeah. love me no matter what. But yeah. Absolutely. Sinners get, sinners get punished. I, would, I believe that. Yeah. I mean, go. If I could leave you with one thing, sola scriptura is why. The, the Protestant, a protestant is a person that protests yeah. the Roman Catholic Church that has become so warped and twisted, which That's you know all from. about. And we believe the Bible alone. That's it, man. And if anybody says anything in any religion, any faith, or whatever, even in, even in Reformed Christianity that's not in line with this, I say, nope. No, it's not here. It's not what the Bible says. So I encourage you to match everything. Don't let you be the only standard. Let something outside yeah. of you, the objective revelation. Tell me your name again. Samuel. Samuel, do you mind if I pray for you, Samuel? I encourage. I was going to ask you okay. to. Okay. Father, I thank you for Samuel. Um, and just as Jesus said about that man, I can't remember exactly where it is. Uh, he was not far from the kingdom of heaven. I believe this man is not far from the kingdom of heaven. I pray that he would look into his namesake that he was named after in the Bible, that godly prophet. I ask, Holy Spirit, that you would open his heart and his mind. We can, I can only knock, but if there's a, there's a stone heart, there's nothing more I could say or do. I pray you would give him a heart of flesh even now as I pray for him and reveal the truth to him that has already been revealed in the Bible, not some sort of subjective Gnosticism but the objective light um, that you've given us in your word. I just thank you for him, and I, I pray that um, in the future, if I could be of use or help to him, I pray that you would give me that honor and privilege, and thank you for the conversation we had today. I pray this in Jesus' name, amen. My name is Norman Patterson. I got, you know, YouTube. Uh, this is recorded, the conversation. I'm gonna probably post it because this is such an insightful conversation. Yeah, yeah, are you okay with that? It's fine by cool. me. But, you know, Norman Patterson, look me up and, um, you know, if you ever want to get in contact with me, I'll be back here. I'll be glad to sit down more. You're very, it's very enjoyable to talk with you. My girlfriend's told me all about it. She's like, oh, there's a guy back on campus with a big hat talking about God. Yeah. And I saw you and I was like, oh, there he is. Yeah, I've cool. heard so much about this guy. Yeah. I got to get over here. Yeah, cool. Well, really, yeah. God bless you. Here. Really you very much there. You too, Sam. See you around. All right. Also, I'm glad you reconnected Yeah, absolutely. Remember it. Catholic parents. Yeah, that's right. My son is named Josiah. Oh, I love it. <laughs>